Hello everyone. Uh, for today, I would like to present some of my work in a matchup project using the DXL Maker Shield and an ESP32 board. So I'm going to sh uh, share some of the hardware solution that I found, and also as an application, I'm going to check out some sing uh, write read sketch in Arduino, both using single core and dual core. So in my uh, 2002 Arduino book, I cover the Arduino board uh, very closely, four of them, OpenRB150, OpenCM904, Maker Zero, and Potenta H7 Lite. The last four board here, of course, need to use a Maker DXL shield so that they can interface with the uh, robotics dynamics. And the way it's designed, usually you can either sit the uh, the XL shield on top of your Maker Zero, in like in this case here, or vice versa. Usually, this is the most useful case. So, although they had to fit both of them, but really only four pin that are matter to the Maker DXL shield: uh, the ground, the TX, and the RX, basically pin 14 and 13, and also TX enable pin A6. So, they are the one that control the access from the Maker Zero, for example, to the various Dynamics uh, that you use. So um, after done this book here, well, I got an idea. Well, there's nothing to presenting these four pin from working together with an EXP32 uh, board. So I chose the Adafruit Feather XP, uh, ASP32 version 2 here. And it has RXTX, it has A5, A6, it has um, ground, it had 3.3 volt, all of that, except they're not in the right location. So what I was trying to do, of course, is first, first easy solution was just to use a standard DuPont jumper cable between the four pin that are involved in the transfer of dynamic so packet between the ESP32 and the uh, DXL make a shield here. So I just did that real quick and then tested my code and it worked fine except the random losses of DXL packet. So logically things are okay, programming wise okay, but that's something preventing from getting good DXL packet flow back and forth. It turned out that I, these pin actually just too loose to do the job to handle high speed DXL packets. That's why you get the random loss of DXL packet all the time. So after similar mode trial, I finally set it down on a wire wrapping solution using also using a, these pre perforated PCB boards. I bought one is as small as possible so that I can mount the DXL shield you can see here and then as I need only one of the header of the EXP board to be mounted or to be interfaced with the DXL shield so I just gonna mount one extra stacking header for it here you can see and then it's just a matter of wire wrapping the correct pins together so first thing to do is of course the ESP32 and the shield need to be grounded together and the ESP RX pin need to be connected to the shield RX pin 13 same way like our TX is connected to TX so if you have used uh, UART connection before UART devices before usually we cross wire them when we put uh, like for example on a uh, a BT210 and BT410 to them, but that's different. In this case here, the DXL shield, it kind of considered as part of the ESP board. So direct connection, RX to RX, TX to AX, no cross wiring. And then uh, the shield using A6, so that's part had to stay. But on the ESP32, you can use some other pin if you want to. I happen to just use A5. Also, I found out another way is uh, another thing too is 
uh, once the DXL is kind of separated, shall we say, from the uh, ESP32 or the Maker Zero board, there are plenty of pin that are left unused now. So what it does is I just create three extra ground pin and also three extra 3.3 volt pin, you know. So on top, it looks pretty decent, very clean on top. You don't have to see the mess of all the wire wrapping. So on top it looks pretty clean. So this is a test I'm going to use. I have uh, two, two XL430. Uh, the ID1 and 2 I use for uh, goal position or position control mode. And the uh, ID11 and 12 I use it for velocity control mode. So uh, for my book, I documented very well this code here, Sing, Read, Write, GPGV. You probably see it in the book. So I just take the code as is, uh, actually not as is, and, re uh, and modify only a uh, little, little. So define the exact serial, serial one, that's the same. That's no problem, we already taken care of that. We took care of the TX and RX pin. The DXL director pin is now A5 instead of A6 if you had the uh, Maker Zero working. But physically, A5 is connected to A6 anyway, so it's just basically the same. And you create your dynamic, so I'll do a new ob uh, object, DXL, just say the same way before. Okay? And it ran fine. No problem there. And I switched from using Core Zero only or Core One only, and the code works fine. So, no problem at all. Next, I'm trying to use dual core. And for dual core, I use a, a, a well, an example from the SB32 library under the free autos folder, I think, called basic multi-threading. So I just use that as a template. So, uh, so how, what did you do? So first, on the regular, and then next code, I created two objects, the DXL GP and the DXL GV. So the GP will correspond to a task, a task called Task GP. So basically, it just run the position control uh, uh, dynamic cells, uh, dynamic cell ID one and two. So you can see it correspond to a task named Task GP. I will show that the code a little bit later. It priority two, and they're running using core zero. DXLGV will be related or connected or run inside the task called task GV and it has priority one and then using core one. Of course you can try to see if it has the same priority and see how it goes but it's up to you guys to do that but separate core. This is a detailed task GP so per the template everything had to be inside an endless loop so a while one here you use and then this code here uh, actually just came from the single core example that in the book. And I just cut and paste the part that involved the uh, the XLGP. So all the uh, the core uh, one, oh, this is core zero, uh, you uh, interfacing with essentially the dynamic so ID one and two. So I just copied the code I already created for a single core code in here, just to rearrange them in here. The only thing you'll watch for is normally when we use single core, we use delay 125. When you do multi-threading or multitasking, you need to use the VTAS delay instead. This 125 millisecond here is usually I use it uh, just for safety. After I send a sync write command, I wait about 125 milliseconds before I issue the sync read command. So sync read command is here, and then the for loop just ex pull out the different uh, present position and uh, and print them out. So all these codes so far I just came from a single core code which you know, in the application most of you already have them. It's just a matter of cut and paste the right section of code into uh, the different task. Also at the end of this uh, every task I also use about a second delay in this example. You can vary this and then I show you uh, what's, what can be done next. And here is uh, beneath this, but this is a, you can see that this is a task for the goal DXLGV. 
Oh, this is for ID 11 and 12 here. So we're using a sync write also and then another sync read uh, on the uh, present velocity instead. So it's basically symmetrical code. So this is how it run. You can run this very nicely. So if you notice here between this line, this line, this line, and this line, that essentially core zero running. And then you can see core one is running after. So they don't actually run at the same time. They run one after the other. So this is kind of nice because now you know that the core zero and core one do not grab serial one exactly at the same time. And then that would just lock everything up. So the uh, ESP32 task schedule is pretty good. It know how to handle that. So it, it keep using serial one, but uh, one core at a time very nicely. Uh, roughly core zero takes about or task on the core zero takes about 1.1367 second to be done in in this particular uh, time period and core one took about 1.18 second so maybe slightly faster so an interesting point here if you look at this two date stamp time stamp here it's about 140 milliseconds so it looked like that 125 millisecond may be too much. Okay, we may be able to reduce that. It looked like all this sync write is take maybe about what 15 millisecond only to do. So that's kind of nice. So these things I can tweak some more uh, if I need to. Uh, also, sometimes though. You see the run, you see that it run like this. So it, it start core zero, and then it start core one also. And then it print the result of core zero, and then it print the result for core one. And it start them again. So it, sometimes it, uh, the, the result is like this. So kind of interesting how the task schedule is doing it. Uh, or sometimes it start out like this, and then it stabilized with this mode. So maybe the task schedule is learning uh, something there. Could be interesting. So, conclusion, kudos to the ESP32 task schedule. People who wrote it uh, are very good. So, because uh, the task schedule somehow manages the DXL, the dynamics and control by serial one very well, as you can see. Considering that Robotis never wrote the Dynamics O2 uh, Arduino library so that it worked as multitasking or anything at all. And it turned out we can tweak it so it can work with dual core very easily on the ESP32 system. So it was easy to use and the performance seemed to be pretty much symmetrical. So that's what I like. Uh, a final, comp uh, final comparison is also in this book. I discussed how to use the Dynamics to, uh, to Arduino library with the Portera 7 very well, very, very much detail. And these are just a summary that kind of are relevant and to com basically to compare to how ESP32 is uh, being used in this project. So in there I found out that Core 7 executes sync, read, and write okay. However, Core 4 only executes sync, write properly. Although you can have sync read come uh, in the code and it will compile and will download okay, but at runtime, sync read will report back junk. You know, you cannot trust what it's sending back. Not sure what the reason is, but it won't do it. It could be just a way because the core M4 is really not, it's just a cool processor to the M7, which is the main, uh, main core. So for practical use, if you happen, so in my book, I also recommend that for practical use, if somehow when you need to read and write to Dynamixo, and then you have to put your code on Core M7. But somehow your application need to write only to Dynamixo, you don't need to read anything back like present position or present velocity, that sort of thing. Basically, you don't need any parameter back from your, your Dynamixo. It's okay to use Core M4. Uh, 